Greetings gamers, KBK here with another long play for you. And this long play, we got another Batman for you. We're going to be doing Batman, made by Sunsoft again, but for the NES. Um, this game is actually the very first Batman game I have ever played before. Uh, it was an awesome experience as a kid, and it holds up really well to today's standards. Uh, as you can see, it is still based off the same movie as the Sega Genesis one that I did in the past, that you can see in the link. And this game is just, I don't know how other to put it, other than just pure awesome. Uh, there are a couple of things that people mention about this game that they have uh, mild issues with. A lot of people, even I remember as a kid, the first time that I played this game I noticed that Batman's like blue and purple, which you would think from the title screen they show them all in black. But now that I look and I look back at this game now and playing it, it doesn't really bother me at all too much because I kind of understand why they went with the color that they did with Batman. I don't know if there, if there is a uh, published reason that they have proof why they went with that color, but I would think they went with it so that he kind of stands out because this game has got, um, it's, it's very colorful, but at the same time it's kind of a dark uh, look to this game, so kind of need him to stand out so you can see. You wouldn't want him to be maybe so dark colored that he blended in with the background so much because then I'd feel it'd be harder to just keep an eye on him with all the action going on in this game. But it's a pretty straightforward platformer. Uh, the punch is the main thing that I use in this game just because it is the most powerful in the game. And uh, I never realized that as a kid. I was just kind of playing and having fun and stuff. And I wasn't really thinking about having all the other options. You have three weapons in this game, which I'm sure I'll be using eventually in this long play. But it looks like I'm predominantly using the punch just because I was used to playing that way as a kid. I didn't, uh, I didn't use the weapons too much, which you'll see later in this long play key times that it's very helpful to be using the weapons. But the punch is pretty solid. Now right here, uh, now that I'm talking about it, you can see I'm using what's called in the manual surprisingly a dirk and from my knowledge a dirk was always like kind of a dagger or a small bladed weapon from medieval games but the manual calls this a dirk those three way now it's a good thing to know about the weapons that uh, the dirk that I was just throwing that uses up three points of your ammo which you'll be collecting through the game while you're playing you also have a spear gun which shoots straight and it's only one shot and that mini boss is hilarious right there. I, I don't even know how they call it mini boss. I've never even seen what he really does, if you think about it, because I never give him a chance. Uh, this boss right here, you'll want back to the weapons once again. I use the dirt just because it's got a good spread to it with all three flying, and it'll definitely be an easy guaranteed hit on this boss. So pretty much just stay in the corner, try to avoid any of that uh, that he shoots at you, and there you go, he's already done. First level is pretty straightforward and easy. Uh, these cutscenes for the NES, in my opinion, are just phenomenal. I think they fit the movie really well. Um, as I was saying, what the weapons use though, the Dirk uses three, the Batarang uses two, and or no, the Batarang uses one, and the Spear uses two, I believe. So you got to keep that balance out because I believe you can only hold a maximum of 99 in your ammo. Now, to follow loosely to the movie, we just went through the streets level, and now we're in Axis Chemicals, pretty much. And, man, the music just really stands out through this game. I just I just enjoy it. This, the music in this game is, like, iPod-worthy, you know? Uh, this music is awesome enough to riff and then play and just listen to on its own, but that's just Sunsoft for you. I really can't think of any game that Sunsoft made that has uh, bad music and not offhand. But, as you can see, as we're progressing through this game, it has a very uh, Ninja Gaiden look to it, with the wall jumping. And the wall jumping is extremely crucial the farther you get in this game. You're going to have to work on mastering the wall jump if you're going to beat this game. It's just a requirement. And I like how this game progresses and subtly puts you in situations where you have to work your way and get better at it. I mean, on the first level, you can wall jump to make a little shortcut, but here is where it gets really tricky. Wall jump in this spot I'm not too confident with, 
and I just kind of mess up. This is probably one of the spots that I do not wall jump and ever really clear it. I know it is clearable, it's just not my strong point. And another thing is, uh, right there's a prime example, uh, pause. That is one of my few complaints about this great game, is that start and select are reverse. Start actually flips through your weapons and select pauses the game. So you'll see through my long play I may be hitting uh, pause randomly because I mix up the buttons because in most games you would hit start to pause and this one it's reversed for whatever reason. That's that's one little oversight but you know what that is not enough for me to uh, dislike this game that's for sure. It's one minor nuisance and it almost gives it a unique charm that people can relate to when you say that. Now we got some more wall jump in here which seems like I'm getting down a little bit better. Uh, another small gripe about this game that a lot of fans have is, as you can see, this is based off the 1989 uh, Michael Keaton Jack Nicholson movie, just like the Sega Genesis uh, long play I did recently. And this one is actually loose, loosely, I don't know how you put it, more loosely based on that movie than the Sega Genesis one, but even though it's more loosely based and the main argument is with this, is the, the enemies. Not, not so much, um, well I guess the bosses too because the bosses didn't fit too well for all of them. Obviously you'll fight the Joker in the end of this one so they keep that consistent. But all these uh, weird like electronic enemies, they, they didn't exist in the movie. I don't know what their derivative are from, but that was a good wall jump right there. I'm proud of that one. <laughs> And it's it's just a minor thing. I, I really don't care about the enemies being consistent as much as the other aspects of the game. For me, for a game to be good, it's just got to have uh, good graphics, good music, and awesome gameplay. Now you'll also notice in this long play, um, if you play the game yourself, the music will continue and stuff. I got... This is my long play that I cut out all my um, failed attempts. I'm pretty sure most of them, if not all of them, I cut out just to give you guys an idea of uh, a path to take when you want to beat this game. It worked out pretty well for me, the methods that I took, and I'd like to share them with you guys so then if you're ever interested in beating this game, you can uh, check out the way that I did it and maybe give me pointers and possibly better routes or better methods. But Either way, this is definitely a great reference for anybody who has played this game before or never has played this game before because you have a lot of things to work with by checking out how I ran through this game. Uh, I am far from a you know master level gamer. I'd say I'm a average gamer, you know, a good gamer at best. And it's basically a mission for me to come back and beat this game because I never beat this game as a kid. I got pretty far I remember as a kid, I don't remember exactly how far I did, but I remember just running out of steam and just never having time or getting too distracted. But now we got another boss that is not in the movie at all. <laughs> and this guy, I go straight for the dirt, and that takes care of this one section. It's like three parts that you have to take out, and if you just, pretty much you gotta take your time and kind of strategize. Now that you have that out of the way of the dirt, you have to bounce up and take out the other like eyeball up to the left, which I just use the dirt again just because it's a guaranteed hit with how wide of a spread it's got. It's a great weapon, but it does use a three per throw. Now here it gets tricky. Right here, this thing starts shooting a spread at you. That's the last piece of the boss. And I remember I tried timing it and it wasn't working out too well to try to time and throw the dirt. There's a lot of good timing in this game, and uh, it is doable if you have it down like right there, I just hit it, but it starts using up a lot of the uh, ammo, and since the dirt is um, such a spread shot, it is uh, one of the weaker of the weapons to have. It's just more of a guaranteed hit. I think all the weapons have different strengths to them, so what I do to speed it up, to finish this boss is right there. It's kind of a sweet spot to be. You can stand and actually punch it. And punch is the strongest thing you got, and right there it does not get right out. So, uh, this does have some good clips that kind of fit with the movie. It's kind of funny how everybody complains how it doesn't follow the movie so well, but I think overall it follows the movie pretty well. It's not bad at all. Uh, here's finally a good opportunity to use the spear gun I use on these guys. Now these guys, there's a reason you're slowly approaching them.
because they are erratic on the screen and they're pretty strong. They can put a lot of dents in Batman's health quick if not take out. So in the sewer level there's a lot of these guys you'll want to just kind of inch yourself across the screen and as soon as you see their arm then start uh, using a projectile weapon if you got it. If you don't have any projectile weapons then you'll have to take them on but I'd say try to keep a strong stock of those weapons and you'll be in good shape, especially in this level when you need them most. Now I use the Dirk on that one just because it's kind of hard to time with the spear gun, so that's just got a better spread. The sewer level I remember being pretty challenging for me as a kid, and it had a good good balance of um, wall climbing, enemies all over, very, very str strategic you gotta be for this level. But anyway, back to the game and the minor complaints people have about it. Uh, other than the, the story is a little bit off that the game portrays from the movie and the enemies are not exactly identical, the cutscenes try to keep it uh, on, on base if that makes sense. I think they're pretty accurate to the movie. It's still an enjoyable experience no matter what. I mean, it, I always keep in mind it's a video game. It doesn't have to be 100% like the movie. Just taking the theme of Batman alone is pretty cool. And I always thought to myself when I was talking about the color of Batman being kind of blue and purple, but majority blue, maybe the approach that they were going for, since I'm seeing these weapons too, it reminds me a lot of, I read the Batman comic book series and I've been reading a lot of the originals because they were released in a volume book that I have, which is an excellent find and purchase. I recommend it to anybody who's a Batman fan and wants to know the history better. Uh, if you pick up on Volume Archive, I believe I got mine on Amazon for a pretty reasonable price, that you can actually have a nice hardcover book of like all the original comics to a certain year, but it's a good chunk and I think they sell more volumes. But anyway, what I was getting at is the original Batman not a lot of people know. Uh, he was dressed in blue, so they could have took that idea from the comic, which is still acceptable. And on top of it, the original Batman used a lot of weapons and he killed people. It's it kind of, I mean, it'll catch you off guard if you don't expect it. The comics I'm reading that are early, Batman's got a gun, he's shooting people, he is um, killing guy, killing people, he's throwing people in like vats of acid. I mean, he's a cold-blooded killer in the original comic series. But now you can see a real taste of how these guys are. They're a real hassle to play. Uh-oh, I got one health bar. Let's hope I play my cards right. Uh, Batman can take some abuse in this game. That's another thing that I really like about this game, is that they at least gave you a good balance of strength. They didn't make Batman very weak at all. You can take a lot of hits in this game. And they're fairly um, generous with items. Um, I don't know if you can really farm items because I never really had to in this game, which means you just kind of keep resetting where enemies are on the screen and keep destroying them until you can maybe fill up your life or your ammo. And now you enter a cave, which I, this is not part of the movie at all that I remember. You never fought anybody in a cave. The only cave I remember is the Bat Cave, so this is probably where it starts skewing away and now you have like robot tanks shooting at you fire and yeah, this is where people are having their consistency problems with the movie but regardless it's it's still very fun it's got a variety of enemies and I personally think the game would have lost the fun factor if it didn't have these weapons that people are complaining hey it's a Batman game all you should do is like punch and kick or something no Batman has gadgets you know what I mean uh, the batterings, of course, will always be acceptable because that's a staple weapon he has, but I don't mind the addition of the spear gun and the dirt just because it gives you more options to approach situations in this game, and there is no right or wrong way to do things. I mean, these weapons can be used in a variety of ways on all the different bosses if you want to use them. It's just kind of what works for you, and I love having those type of options that it can just be what works for you because there's some games I get frustrated that there's only one way you can do a boss, you know, like take them out, and that kind of takes it away from me in a game, that, oh, there's just this one way. It's kind of fun that they give you a variety of options so then you can think outside the box and how you want to approach a situation in this game. It's very cool. But right here, another good wall jump challenge. you got to be careful of these spinning, like, gears, because they'll cut you. 
they'll take some damage. And as you as you can see through progressing through this game, they really emphasize more and more this wall jumping and being very accurate with it. Because if you make these mistakes, it's going to take some health away really fast. It's not easy to say the least how they do this. Now another thing to mention about this game is the difficulty level. This is by far not an easy game for the NES. This is a good challenge in my opinion. It's, it's not impossible, it's just going to take some time to get some patterns down, figure out some bosses like right here. And right here you can see I'm trying to go the battering route and actually it didn't work out too well. Let's see this time. Now that's another thing that I like, that when you do die in this game, that makes it extremely fair, is they spawn you right back as long as you have enough lives within your continue. And this is one of those famous games that give you infinite continues, so there really is no reason not to be able to beat this game because it gives you as many tries as you want on levels. Now once you get to this level, it starts getting pretty tricky. It's it, If you thought it was tough before, it's going to get a lot more tough now and as you can see I'm strategizing by being very careful because look there's our friend and we want to make sure that we are in a nice safe position that we can take him out I mean that is one of the good things about Nintendo and you can just find the best way to approach some enemies that cannot trigger them just to get them off the screen because this is already pretty crowded as you can see to try to get through and Whenever these games like this have infinite continues, I just think it's an awesome way to be for a game because it it doesn't take away from the gamer to have to redo the whole game. I mean, personally me, when I'm playing games that you have like five lives and that's it, and then if you run out of your lives, you have to go all the way back to the beginning. I, I feel a lot more discouraged playing games like that or wanting to replay it like immediately again, but here, if I run out of lives and it takes me back to the beginning of the level that I'm working on and I have infinite tries, that, that's, that's fine with me I, because you are stuck at this point and it's as many tries as it takes you if you want and if you want to turn the game off then it's on you to replay all the way back to the point. I mean we're not at the point where save states were um, commonplace yet so this was the next best thing was to run into a game that had infinite continues which works out pretty well in this game uh, another thing is timing is pretty crucial in this game which makes sense because it's a Batman game you have to time your attacks pretty well you have to extremely time like right here when you want to wall jump and be able to attack an enemy before the enemy does their um, predictable attack that you see how they're doing and now we're in another position that we can't fall down because those gears will hurt you. So it's some more wall jumping challenge fun for us. So the best thing I can recommend if you want to get far in this game is in the earlier levels, wall jump a lot or as much as you can if you have any opportunities to just to get a feel for it because all that practice you take on the earlier stages you'll benefit from when you get to these later stages. But even to this day, out of all the Batmans that I play, especially for the 2D platformer Batmans, this one will always be a replay for me. Even though that it has a pretty tough challenge to it, it is a very rewarding game to play and to conquer if you are able to beat it. It will make you feel like gold when you get through this game because it is one of those games that I don't feel anybody can say that they beat. It definitely takes some skill, it takes some patience and timing, all the vital things for a good gamer to have if you're going to make it in these types of games. But there's so many factors you gotta calculate in this game. It's not just a run through platformer, it does have some not too maze like elements to it, but you do kinda go through the level. And there are punishing points and levels I've noticed that if you fall off at a certain point, you'll actually fall to an earlier point in the level, so then you have to replay through the level to get to that point again. So they definitely do have uh, risk and reward options in this game that you can take on certain levels paths that'll be a little bit faster if you're able or skilled enough for wall jumping to get through them. And right here is one of them. There's the exit to the right, but we can't make it, so we have to work all the way around through the level 
and it's a possibility if you fall that you'd have to work your way through it again. But this starts getting real tricky now because you have not just the wall jumping, you have to factor a lot of enemies and their timing. So it's not just being able to wall jump, it's being able to wall jump at a good timing point. So that is when you start really depending on your weapons This in these later stages because you just want to eliminate any enemy you can that is in a landing point of where you want to be in this game. Like right here, I don't want to deal with that hot mess right there going super fast, so I'm going to get him out of the way, and then I'll jump to it make it a lot easier on yourself. Now, if you want to make it more difficult, you can just jump into him and hope you can time a punch and take it out, which is possible, but it's a lot more difficult than it needs to be. And then right here, some more wall jumping fun. Now, these are kind of leaps of faith because remember those uh, spinning parts below you? You're gonna have to fall and hopefully land on one. And if you land on one, they're gonna be um, like a escalator moving you in a direction. Uh oh, that's no good. Yeah, taking some hits, but luckily Batman can take these hits. Now, uh, but pretty much like right here, you want to make sure you get all the enemies off the screen. The the old-fashioned Nintendo trick of having an enemy on a screen and then kind of walking away from a screen and, and walking back. It doesn't really blip them out too much in this one. I have seen it happen to an enemy or two, but it's not as common, so you're going to more than likely have to take on every enemy you run into. And if you can time the jump and punch, it's also very effective because, like I said a few times, the punch is definitely the most powerful uh, weapon you got is yourself in this game. And for those guys right there, I noticed the boom, the batterings are probably your best bet. And you always want to keep those in mind. Because the other weapons don't throw as fast and don't stun as long. Because each weapon has its real good point about it. The batarang is really good because it kind of stuns them if you're throwing at something longer. Because it's, it's coming back, so it's hitting it like twice at least when you throw one. And But it's got a short range. Then you have the spear gun which goes across the whole screen and is the most accurate because it's a straight shot. And then you have, like I'm throwing here, the dirt, which is probably awesome, but it just takes a lot of your ammo because it just covers the screen really well. And there, we got those guys knocked out. Still climbing the stairs. We're getting there. But other than the, you know, the minor things of not following the movie and Batman being blue, which I find perfectly acceptable because it's not like... It's not like you made Batman red or something, you know what I mean? If you made Batman a color that ba you've never seen Batman in, I mean, that that's that's an argument, but not here. Now, this boss, this boss gave me a few tries right here. He is not a piece of cake. This one, you want to find a real good spot. I noticed that kind of hanging out in the middle and just punching because that's your strongest attack. You want to hang out in that spot and take as minimal damage as possible. And once you take out one of the boxes with enough hits, you'll want to regroup your strategy, which I'll be showing you here in a minute. I think if I hit it just enough here, the box will explode. The other one will speed up significantly and then start doing a different attack. So that's where I go right where I was from the beginning, because as you can see, I'm not getting hit by projectiles and shooting if you hang out in that spot. So as long as you time it just right, like I'm doing right here, and you uh, can have enough ammo, you can throw your weapon, stand back up there, throw your weapon, rinse and repeat. That is probably one of the best tactics I have for this boss, and I don't know if there's many others out there, but th I just go with what works for me, because he's out of the way now. Now we earn ourselves another cool cutscene, which is really cool how they did with that um, bat wing, and it's accurate to the movie as far as I'm concerned. He flew the bat wing to the cathedral. And he actually crashed it in the movie, but they're not really showing us that. It looked like it landed to me, but... Now we're working our way through Cathedral. Now this level you see right here is going to be more than likely the level you play the most in this game. Uh, when I went back to my footage of me playing this, I played this level for at least about 15 minutes. Uh, retrying and then, you know, continuing and dying quite a few times just because I had to get used to um, the pattern and knowing how things work out in this. It's a very uh, well-designed level for utilizing pretty much all the skills you learned all the way up to this point in this game. I mean, really, 
there's no uh, other level I can think of that fully utilizes how much you've learned throughout this game. And that's, that's another real good um, design point when I see Nintendo games that it, ta it shows you and kind of teaches you while you progress through a game skills like wall jumping, using weapons at certain time, timing, and then it slowly challenges you more and more as you go. And it's these types of attention to details that when companies designed these games back in the day that really stand out to me today. That they really just had a well-rounded game where it teaches you skills and then pushes you to the limits as you progress through the game. Now this part of this level is hands down the most difficult. You've got a lot working against you. You got enemies pretty much on every platform you want to land on. You have to have your timing down cold to preserve Batman's life. And right there, I didn't realize I needed to not go up anymore. I had to go to this left. So this spot right here is very tricky. You got to fall down and then make it. And I, I didn't even make it there. I'm actually taking some hits. That one's real tough to pull off. But no, you want to not hit these gears and just keep trying to do your timing well. But since I did so well on my uh, earlier part of the level, my strategy was to not get hit at all and save all my health for this point of the game. And right there I did it correctly. So, slowly but surely, you know. Now these things are pretty annoying. I'm waiting a lot because they got two patterns to them. They got the one that shoots out and then they got one with two right following it. And you gotta time it just right to make sure that you can jump right on that enemy and then take it out with a punch as fast as possible before he starts attacking again. But luckily, um, the game is not stingy with health or items, and that really is helpful, to say the least. Because without um, them dropping enough weapons and hearts, this game would be a whole nother level of difficulty. But right here, we're getting close enough. You gotta do that drop again. Let's see if I pull it off. I don't remember if I did at this point. Yep, got it down cold there. It's a whole lot of timing on this. And this part just keeps repeating and repeating and repeating. And you're going to be playing this to a point thinking, does it ever end? But it does, because as you can see, it's getting a little bit more interesting up there. And you're going to want to get anxious too, because you just want to get to the point that hopefully will be a checkpoint. Now right here, you just got to take out this guy. Wall jump. Don't do that. <laughs> Probably wall jump and then take him out correctly first. And now we finally get a boss here. And no, it's not the Joker yet. You have this guy before the Joker, which I don't know his name offhand. And this guy is pretty annoying. Uh, strategy to do with him is pretty much the battering for me. I've seen a lot of different tactics. Some people like to stay to the left and just jump off the wall when he attacks. But here is the boss of the bosses here, and this guy is tough as nails. It took me a few tries on the Joker, and my problem was I was playing too defensively. You have to be extremely aggressive with the Joker, and another trick is, it's funny, the gun that he's using, he shot down uh, the Batwing with in the movie, and he's shooting at you, so you can only imagine how powerful that gun is, which is fitting, because if he hits you with the bullets from that gun, that's three health points taken off, so couple hits and you're dead with that gun so try at all costs if you have to take a hit to only run into a joker and there you go that's it be aggressive and only use punch and keep crowding them and right here I sat for a minute because it's the first time I ever beat him I didn't realize that you have to walk towards the joker to end it so that's why I'd sit here for a minute I'm like in I'm in awe that I actually beat him and right here is hilarious when you compare it to the movie and it's kind of funny that this was for kids or adults or for whoever because uh, there's Batman being classic. He throws the Joker off in the game. Well, I don't know if you guys have seen the movie, but spoiler alert, he doesn't throw him off deliberately like that in the movie. <laughs> and uh, that just makes Batman look even more like a cold-hearted killer. But once again, my whole theory of this Batman and the NES is that they were basing him off the original comic book Batman, which really was a cold-hearted killer, used guns, didn't care, was just out to get the job done for justice. He was a ruthless vigilante badass. That's what he was. But, um, no, that's Batman for the NES. Uh, 
There's the ending. I still to this day think this game is excellent. Replay value is 100% there. Anytime I could pop this game in and have a good time, I strongly recommend it for you guys to try it if you haven't. And if you have tried this game, have you beaten it? And if you have, what strategies did you use on these bosses and how to get it? I'd love to hear what you guys think about this uh, review and long play and what strategies you guys did to beat it. So, till next time, I'll talk to you guys and take it easy.